so, in between episodes of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, we are here to tell you about that we saw Super 8. <laughs> <laughs> we saw Super 8 on Friday night. And, yeah, it was, yeah, okay, I don't want to get ahead of myself and let everyone know how I feel right away. But it was the movie of my dreams. This movie was kind of made for people of our generation. You know, there's a couple years in between. Yeah. Um, as Almost as if J.J. J. Abrams was trying to remind us all why we fell in love with movies in the first place. Yeah. Movies that we grew up watching. Um, and I thought that was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Movies that spark creativity and wonder there was such an I mean it's just completely like a love tale to Spielberg which obviously he was very involved in it but like the sets looked like they were out of Close Encounters of the Third Kind or Jaws or E.T. and the kids interactions were just like those sorts of real things that made me first I mean that made me love the first Spielberg movies more than any other ones because there's just, like, chaos, and everyone's talking, and you can't even really... Like, it'll take, I'm sure, several viewings before we really hear everything everyone's saying. It feels like you're eating dinner at your own family. Yeah. Family's house. And I think in recent years he's become a lot more sterile, and it's much more scripted, um, which is cool, but I thought it was great how he and Abrams decided to kind of throw it back to that sort of chaos, that wonderful chaos and the kids, oh my gosh, love them. Everyone kept describing it as, like, Goonies meets E.T., which, I mean, I don't want to just, like, slap that on it, but, I mean, come on. You can see where they're getting that. Kids who are all going on an adventure together and cussing, and all of them have their own specialty. And acting like kids. Yeah. Acting like real kids. Just completely overwhelmed and yet because of the fact that they're kids they're a lot more courageous than probably most people would be because they're not necessarily thinking and really like that's what i loved so much about this is movies made for kids today don't have that when we were growing up movies that were made for children you had you had two different kinds you had the ones that are set in the real world and you had the ones that were set in some fantasy land. Like, you had the never-ending story. And then you had stuff like The Goonies and E.T. And the original Disney Sunday night movie, Little Spies. <laughs> and, I mean, a lot of them had stuff that wouldn't actually happen. Like, that might have aliens and stuff in them. But they actually are set in the real world. And I think that both of those types of movies are important for kids. Because... Kids need to know that fantasy worlds exist, at least to them. But then they also need to know that these adventures can happen to them. This happens in the real world, and I can really have an adventure, and I can really get hurt, and you don't have that in movies anymore. You still have the fantasy land stuff. Kids still have Narnia. But if a movie's set in the real world, children can't go have anything dangerous happen to them, and they can't get hurt, and... And, and kids sad. also don't talk in the way that kids would talk Yeah. in movies now. And I think uh, someone once asked me a long time, like a few years ago, like why E.T. was my favorite movie if I really loved movies. They're like, but it's so unrealistic. But because of all the realistic elements in it, like the way that Elliot talks to E.T., the way that he shows him around his room, and everything like that, that's what makes it completely real. Like, there's no doubt in my mind, if you told me that that had actually happened, that I would believe it, because everything about it is so perfect, and every detail is so flawless, that it makes me believe it. And in this movie, where the kids are just really interacting with each other, and everything looks fantastic. Mm-hmm, it does. And the kids are totally lost in wonder, and like, ah. Oh. But you get lost in the wonder with them. Yeah, you totally believe it. Because that's what it takes, is it takes everything else being completely believable and credible for you to actually, like, take it and 
Mm-hmm. For kids to then think, oh, this could actually happen to me. So. And to back all that up, there was some really good acting yeah. in this movie. The um, kids were great. Um, especially Elle Fanning. Yeah. Like. No surprises there. What What do her parents feed their daughters <laughs> to do these things? What sort of superhuman parents does she have? Ah. Uh, um, the main kid, played by Joel Courtney, was great. Very... Like, David said it right after we left the movie, like, it's like they found the kid who looked the most like Elliot, but at, like, 12 years old or so, and made him... The, I mean, he's definitely his own person. Yeah. He was great. He but was, for those of us who grew up watching E.T., you can see the similarities, yeah, too. Yeah, the resemblance. And just the same kind of character. Just yeah. Same a good compassion. Kid. He's very sweet. And then, Kyle Chandler... I've been watching him since early edition on CBS. I think it was on CBS when I was in, like, sixth grade. I loved that show. Way to go, man. Yeah. You've come a long way since early edition. He was really good as the dad. And, I mean, he's been doing stuff on Friday Night Lights for a while now. But I really like him, and he did a really good job. Um, Riley Griffiths, the kid who's... Well, I don't want to give too much, but, I mean... Yeah, we don't He's want to a, give anything away, because I didn't know anything about this movie, was, and that was good. Yeah, they were all, I mean, just every single one of them was fantastic. Totally geeky, totally believable, the way they would banter with each other. Just, I mean, it felt like I was sitting at the lunch table in elementary school. Yeah. I really think that if you made, it, it felt to me as though the kids from E.T., Michael's friends that play Dungeons and Dragons, if you made a movie about them and an adventure they go on, it would be Super 8, which is just about the best compliment I could give J.J. Abrams. Who? Well, okay, we keep talking about Spielberg and all that sort of stuff. Well, most... Uh, I can't help but say his name. <laughs> a lot. But, um, J.J. Abrams. Good job. This is a really great movie. This is his first movie that's, like, his own. Totally original. Um, Despite all the comparisons to Spielberg, totally original. Like, yeah. He wrote original it, story. he directed it. And... It definitely had his touch on it. The sc- mm. and, like the scariness and the effects and just like the scale. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the the build of tension. It was very, very JJ Abrams and it was great. Um, something that we were talking about after we left the movie is whether or not a movie could be as effective and as like nostalgic for us if it didn't take place in the late seventies or early eighties, because this movie takes place in seventy nine. Like, I wish, I mean, I'm glad that this movie, that Super 8 took place when it did, but I kind of would love to see a movie that did the same sort of thing, put kids in realistic, modern day, but yeah, but in modern day, like, with iPods and crap. Well, because and all this movie was obviously made for people of our generation that remember these movies that we've been talking about, and that's why it worked so well in that time period, but... No one is making movies with that same feel for kids of this generation. Of this, yeah, of today. Of today's generation. I don't. I don't know how. I don't know if that much would be a possible. kid would like Super Eight. I mean, they might love it. But it wouldn't mean the same thing to them that it meant to all of us. Mm-hmm. Not that we were from the late seventies, either of us. But well, yeah. but late or early to mid eighties, we remember what it yeah. was like watching kids' movies then, and that has the same feel. So I just hope that there can be movies for this generation that are just as magical and sweet and so much fun. Um, but yeah. Somebody do that. Yeah, please. Come on, Hollywood. Surprise us and do something awesome. Instead of another Chronicles of Narnia. No offense to people who like that. Oh, I like those. But I want something set in the real world. Yep. It's not... I don't pay it forward. Totally full of CG, either. Yeah. Although, of course. Well, this had a lot of CG. Going into spoilers. <laughs> it's not. So anyway, um, if you love movies, especially movies of the 70s and 80s with children on wonderful voyages. An ensemble cast of children. You will love Super 8. If you don't, why are you watching this video? Or reading our website at all. I don't know. Anyway, have a good day. Go see Super 8, because we're going to again. And well done, everyone involved.